Hello everyone. Welcome to Stochastic Calculus for Finance One. This is chapter 3 on state prices. So first here is an overview of what we are going to study in this section. Uh, we will start first start by talking about change of measures. And this will be very useful for us. And this will essentially allow us to move from the risk neutral probability uh, world to the real world probabilities. And this is a very important concept to know and that will be used all over again when we move to continuous time stochastic processes. Then we will talk about state prices and these are like an important construct for us to understand and cause, because they will be using them when we study the capital asset pricing model and from the capital asset pricing model then we can go and really solve some interesting uh, problems like optimal investment decision given uh, uncertainty. Uh, okay, so let's dig in. So first, change of measures. So to talk about change of measure, we just need to first need to introduce a concept of random Nicodin. And to this, so remember we have the actual probability measure. This is the probabilities that could happen in the real world today as we stand. And we also have risk neutral probability measures, right? And if you remember, we already saw this risk neutral probability measure or um, concept when we were studying the one period binomial asset pricing model and these probability measures are nothing but construct uh, that can help us with the pricing of securities in the no arbitrage world and if you remember well uh, if we already derived this in the one period binomial asset pricing that p tilde is just a function of r the interest rate d which is which we're calling the down factor and u which is the up factor that's all there is to it. Then, given these two concepts, then we can talk about random Nicodin, right? And the random Nicodin is just a random variable that we're calling Z here, which is just the ratio of the risk neutral probability to the real world probability. And that's all there is to it. And so, this random Nicodin, this random variable Z, will have these properties, right? So, the expected value of z, the, uh, the probability that the random variable z is greater than 0 is equal to 1. And this is actually quite obvious, right? And I can show you very quickly why. So here, I forgot to say, here we're assuming that p tilde of the outcome omega is greater than 0. And p omega is also greater than 0. So these are basic assumptions in the random uh, Nikodin uh, definition. So then we see that, okay, so if this guy is greater than 0 and the denominator is also greater than 0, then of course the ratio will be greater than 0. Hence the probability that z is greater than 0 is 1. So that's very simple. There is no way that we'll have this ratio be less than 0. So that's very that's very easy one. Then we can move to the second property. The expected value of this random variable is 1. And note that we say expected value under the real world probability. Uh, uh, yeah, real world measure. So let's look at this. So we're saying that the expected value of z right, is equal to 1. So how can we show this? Well, the expected value of the random variable z is nothing other than the sum of all the outcome that could happen in our universe, right, of the random variable z omega times the probability omega. And we're using the probability, not p tilde, because we're in the real, we're using the real world probabilities, right? So then from here, we can move. So z, w is nothing but this ratio, right? So we can replace it, this ratio, into here. So that means we have, this is the sum of all the outcome that could ha happen in our universe of uh, then P tilde W P of W times P of W. Right, the probability of the outcome omega, and then we sum this up. Then we can see that we can essentially can these two cancel out, right? So then all we get is the sum 
of all the outcome that will happen of p tilde w well p tilde is a probability measure right so the sum of everything that could happen so this, these are probabilities so they need to sum up to one hence we show that actually that okay this guy has to be true because expected value of the random variable z sums up to one that's just what we show now so again this is a very uh, easy concept to show so then this is the third property the expected value of a random variable y and here we're saying y is a random variable uh, the expected value under the risk neutral or the, the risk neutral world is equal to the expected value of z time y using the real world probability measure okay let's look into this so y is a random variable so we're saying that the expected value the a tilde of y so this is nothing but uh, the sum of all the outcome that could happen that are inside our universe omega here capital omega um, okay so we want the expected value of y so that would be y time p tilde okay so i can say y of omega here time p tilde of omega okay so now p tilde of omega we can see p tilde of omega is nothing but z and then we multiply by pw then we will get p tilde omega right so we can replace this p tilde omega by by its value so that will be sum omega in our universe of y of the outcome omega mm -hmm, of, of the given outcome multiplied by zw then and yeah, then pw here okay and then we can see okay so this is a random variable this is another random variable and they are all being multiplied by this probability here so that's the same thing as saying then that's the expected value of this y z and then since we're using the, the real world probability here so that's just like we've we're not adding the tilde here we in the we using the real world and that are that's all we wanted to show here so we have again so the this is the random nicodem uh random nicodem run variable here that we just introduced so then we can move to the next step So okay, so the way we can show here how this random Nicodin is actually computed, and it's very simple. There is nothing really uh, uh, mysterious about this. So, so this is just like a binomial tree model, and it's, we're using a tree step, and the tree is based on these uh, parameters, right? So we have the up factor, the down factor, the starting stock price, right, and the interest rate R. And given this, these parameters for the binomial trees, then we can come up with the risk neutral probabilities, right? So we can say p tilde, the probability of going up is one half, and q tilde is one half also. And these are using this, we found this using these parameters of the trees. And then let's say that actually the real world probabilities are given down here. So given this information, we can calculate actually uh, the random variable the random nicodium for this so we can just look at like the probabilities at the end of the street at the end of the period so period three here so the probability of getting three head will be eight over 27 and this is nothing mysterious so the probability of getting one head under the real world measure is just two over three so getting head three times is just two over three to the power two divided by three to the power three right and the calculation here well, I will just show you one of them. I think they are very straightforward. Uh, so that's like 2 over 3 times 2 over 3 times 2 over 3, right? And that's where we're getting basically this 8. And the numerator this is 27. Pretty simple. And then we can do the exact same thing for using the risk. Uh, the risk neutral measure, right? The risk neutral probabilities. So doing that, since like we ha the probability of getting head is just equal to the probability of getting tail so all these will just have the same 
values right the same uh, probabilities then to find to find uh, the random decoding then we just need to take these guys and divide them by the values here right and that's all we did here which is very simple so I can show also like for example this first case so we define we said like Z we said before that Z Omega is nothing but P Omega P tilde Omega divided by P Omega right okay so in this case this Omega here just head 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 right so that means that just the probability of getting head 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 under the recent neutral world divided the, by the part of getting head 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 under the real world right so that's just like 1 over 8 divided by 8 over 27 and you can do the math check you will find 27 over 64 and and doing that then we can come up with this random nicodin uh, variable which is so this is just like a quick example to show how this is actually calculated uh, okay okay let's move now to talk about state prices so first we need to introduce the concept of state price density and state price density is just given by this expression it is just basically the random decoding is counted to the present if you imagine we're using an n period binomial model right so n capital n will be the end of the period uh, in, our, in our binomial asset pricing model then we introduce the concept of state price corresponding to outcome omega which is just basically the state price density multiplied by the real world probability of the outcome omega occurring and to interpret these numbers and understand what they mean so we can first consider the particular outcome of tossing, tossing a coin n times and we can call that outcome omega bar as described here so if you're tossing the coin maybe let's say four times then omega bar could be something like a particular outcome of this experiment so maybe h h t h something like that now with this definition then we can consider a derivative security that pays one if and only if the exact outcome omega occur otherwise it pays zero so considering this derivative security then we can use the recent neutral pricing formula to find its value today right so the value today is just equal to the expected value of the payoff under the risk neutral world discounted to the present right then from here we can actually expand this uh, this expectation to to just one time the probability of the outcome omega occurring and we're not seeing like the other omegas here because all of them are multiplied by zero times the probability of those omegas right so we can just drop them from the uh, from the equation here so we just get one times the probability of the outcome omega bar occurring then if we just look closely this p p p till p till w bar can simply be replaced by the random decoding multiplied by the probability in the real world right and if you look closely now from here like what is this what is this this uh, expression here notice that this expression is nothing but the press the, the state price density omega so because of that then you can just replace this value here by the state price density then we get this expression the state price density multiplied by the real world probability measure and again we can look at this and start to uh, what is this value well this value is exactly equal to the st state price density and then we can replace here so we have the state price density omega bar so just to conclude what we have seen here is if we consider the derivative the state price the state price omega bar is equal to the price of a derivative security that pays one if and only if omega bar occurs and zero otherwise 
and that is why then this is called the state price density state price right so it is a state price because it is the price of the derivative securities that pay one if and only if of the particular outcome omega bar occurs and then the state price density then as we can see here can just be taught as uh, the price of the derivative security per unit of real world probability of the outcome omega occurring so those are some interpretation of this state price and state price density